Hi everyone, Big, Big Sydney Fish, Fish Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this brand new Fleet Foxes album, Crack Up. This is the third full-length album from Washington contemporary folk outfit, Fleet Foxes. It's their first album in six years, which is kind of long considering the band only took three years to follow up their debut. I mean, LCD Sound System broke up and reunited the band in pretty much the same span of time. Regardless, I'm excited to hear this new album, even if it did take a while to get here, uh, not only because I kind of enjoyed some of the songs leading up to the release of this album, but also Helplessness Blues was my album of the year in 2011. It's my album of the year. Now, if there was one thing that struck me about the tracks leading up to this record, it's that they were a little more obtuse than I was anticipating New Fleet Foxes songs to be. But that's kind of this new album in general. While the band does kind of keep their trademark aesthetic, the bright, very cavernous reverb, the dense layers of guitar and vocal harmonies and strings. But much like on Helplessness Blues, the band shakes up their songwriting fundamentals a little bit for a fresher approach, even if it is a little more difficult this time around. Crack Up doesn't depend on the rustic and rootsy folkisms of Fleet Fox's debut record, nor is it as grand and dramatic and driving and focused as Helplessness Blues. Crack Up is a slightly more experimental venture, probably the most experimental Fleet Foxes record so far. Leaning a little bit harder on linear and winding song structures, repetition too, at points to kind of lull the audience into a hypnosis, sudden shifts in volume, and it sounds like the band are starting to incorporate electronics into their repertoire too. I mean, right from the start of this record, it should be no surprise that this is going to be a different Fleet Foxes album, because Robin hits us right away with these weird, whisper-quiet vocals. It's, it's kind of like right here in front of our very ears, he's inventing mumble folk. Then all of a sudden we're hit with this sudden rush of panoramic instrumentation. We get more very quiet vocals. We're getting hit with that loud dynamic again. It's kind of like a sonic roller coaster. I don't think it's an entirely perfect experiment, and it does leave the album off with kind of an awkward introduction, but uh, as a fan, I'm at least sitting here wondering where is this going? I'm kind of intrigued. Now, there are other tracks in the track listing here that I find equally entrancing, like 3rd of May, where the band aggressively hits these instrumental highs with just hard, steadily strummed guitars and some furiously bowed string sections. Later in the track, the first half is complemented with this really dreamy instrumental soundscape of like fluttering pianos, twinkling guitar arpeggios. Some of the soundscapes on this thing almost have like a god speedy in post rockian kind of flavor to them. I'm also kind of impressed with how organic and natural some of the electronic sound at the introduction of the song Cassius. There's also a really subtle like lapping water sample at this point in the song too. And it's cool that Fleet Foxes can essentially make folktronic music at this point on the album without losing the original kind of rootsy appeal of the band. It's not like the moment any electronics or keyboards kind of come in that things go kind of um, static or or stiff, or digital. I love the woodwind and string interlude that this coasts into later in the track. I mean, the band is really flexing their instrumental muscles on this thing, and it sounds great. I mean, there are numerous tracks on this thing where we get some kind of grand instrumental interlude or some kind of unexpected surprise, like the pretty electric guitar leads all over uh, one point in Mirk Stapa, or uh, at the very finish of this track where we have a, a huge building wall of instrumentation. At the June phase of the song On Another Ocean, the band essentially breaks into um, a kind of swagger-infused folk rock groove. Definitely did not expect to hear something rock this hard on a Fleet Foxes album. I mean, it, you know, it, 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 it comparably, it rocks kind of hard. And I also like the way that the outro of the song, If You Need to Keep Time on Me, uh, is sort of submerged into this fluttering wall of pianos and just melts away. There are a lot of experiments with song structure on Crack Up 2. There are at least four tracks on this thing that work in two major musical phases, and tracks two and three are extensions of one another. Lyrically, the song, If You Need to Keep Time on Me, is kind of referencing the yearning for friendship on the previous track. So this album is far from just a random collection of songs or anything like that. You know, there's some very deep and lovely and gorgeous connections between each song on this record, uh, whether that be lyrical or instrumental. There are a handful of songs on here, though, that seem to be kind of sturdy, standalone ballads that have very clear and definitive beginnings and endings. They're a bit of a nice breather from the heavy and dense and winding songs that make up a bulk of the album. I love the Grand Fool's Errand, this epic sweeping ballad that makes for 
one of the few moments on this record that would have fit snugly into Helplessness Blues. There's the very wintry and beautiful kept woman, uh, which is actually so gorgeous it's almost like a, a religious experience. And the song If You Need to Keep Time on Me, you know, it's a pretty simple refrain and ballad, you know, that there is Something about it that is uh, maybe a little too primitive. Uh, I do wish there was a little bit more instrumental progression to this track. It feels a little bit like a motif, but you know, I, I still do enjoy the sentiment of the song. There's so many great tracks in the track listing. <laughs> I still am kind of slightly baffled by I Should See Memphis, which is a kind of drained, very downtrodden ballad. It's a little patience testing, but there is something kind of dark and unsettling about the tone of the song too that keeps me somewhat drawn to it. Might grow on me with more listens in the future, and the title track on this thing is the grand epic finish that this record deserves. The start, I will say, is a little inconspicuous, but eventually the song builds into this grand marching procession of instrumentation uh, that eventually coasts out into a somewhat ambient horn outro. Overall, I thought this was a really great, tight, 55-minute record from Fleet Foxes. The band really came through after having to wait for six long years for a brand new record, but I will say it did take a little while to come to that conclusion because this album is, again, instrumentally dense. The song structures are not easy to get a grip of, uh, kind of make familiarity difficult. But once I got a hold of the twists and turns that this album took me through, I really came to love it. This record became as inspiring as any Fleet Foxes album I had enjoyed in the past. And I love that the band was able to take so many structural and instrumental risks on this album while still maintaining a lot of the core fundamental ideas and sort of trademark sounds that make Fleet Foxes Fleet Foxes. Not only that, but I feel like uh, the band has arisen as a slightly more conscious Fleet Foxes on this album, as on the track Cassius there are some very clear references to the death of Alton Sterling and Black Lives Matter protests. Robin expresses sensitivities and concerns about the way society treats women on the following track and the track Kept Woman. But much of this album actually deals lyrically in themes of isolation and loneliness, friendship, distance from others, and that need for other people to be a part of your life. And that for me philosophically is kind of the big takeaway from this album, which which is, you know, actually pretty great because, you know, the philosophical takeaway from Helplessness Blues is part of what made Helplessness Blues so powerful to me. Now, keep in mind, I don't think this new record is as focused as Helplessness Blues. Uh, the beginning and ending, I think, could have been a little bit more sturdy, clearer, more decisive, and there were at least a couple of songs in the midst of the track listing that I was somewhat cold on. But outside of that, I'm really loving this album. You know, it is a difficult and a dense listen, but a very gratifying one, too, and I'm pretty excited to see Fleet Foxes continuing uh, with new studio material. I'm feeling a decent strong eight on this thing. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Over here next to my head is a review of the previous Fleet Foxes album. Love that record. Again, my album of the year. Click on that video. Watch that video. Stay locked in with your melon. Or, you know, there's a link over here where you can subscribe to the channel too. And uh, that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay hydrated. Get some sleep forever.